Hello guys, welcome back. We're going to do factorization machines, which is a binary classification algorithm on the churn data set. Okay, we're going to import that into the S3 buckets a little differently. First, we're going to create the bucket, then we're going to do uh, DFP equals churn modeling CSV. Then we're going to drop these three columns right here, which are irrelevant. Then we're going to fill in the nonds if there is any with a neutral number of zero. Model equals DF, DF shape. And then here's what we're going to do. X equals model data dot drop exited. Y equals obviously exited. And then as type float 32, as type float 32, test train split. And then here's where we're gonna how we're gonna upload it into the S3 buckets like this, rather than the other way I did in all, most of my videos. You can name the key whatever you want, and then uh, model output location. Okay. Okay, now here's where we get to the container. Image URI factorization machines. X train shape. Very important because this is going to be one of the features in the parameters. Eight. Okay, well, you do it at this instance right here. And then here's where we get to it. Feature dim equals the X train shape. The factorization features. This is where this gets tricky with this algorithm. This really makes a difference because you don't want to do it too high or too little. That's why sometimes you got to experiment it with a little bit. It's same with the batch size as well. This algorithm is more sensitive. You could put this at four on a certain data set and then you get 40% accuracy. You could put that on 11, you get um 90 percent accuracy it, it really doesn't matter too big or too small the num factors the batch size is important but this algorithm when i mean is sensitive i mean how it takes into the s3 buckets all of that because if you do it the traditional way like i did on my um here's what i mean by sensitive Okay, let me look on the on the XGBoost classifier that I did once. How I uploaded in the S3 bucket that time. Okay, PD concat, all of that. Training inputs. Content type CSV. Here's where you get an error. If you do CSV or even text CSV, you... Uh, Trust me, with this data set, with this algorithm, you're better off doing it this way. You'll get a bunch of errors. I saw a bunch of people complaining and uh, asking on stack skills, but I found the solution. So I thought it was funny. That's where I got the idea for this uh, thing right here. Okay. And then obviously binary classifier. And then uh, fit the train and uh, test data. Okay. It had like 88% accuracy. Honestly, this is not my favorite classifier. My favorite classifier, if I would have to pick, would be linear learner um, for classification, or it would be XGBoost. I honestly um, do not recommend this or KNN. They're more sensitive. Yeah, the test was 80%. The train was 87. Yeah. Okay. Okay, the data capture configuration. Remember to do this in every deployment, especially if you're going into production. Okay. Import JSON. 
This time we're going to do it this way. X test, content type, print results. Here you go. And then we're going to put that in the data frame real quick. Flatten the arrays. And oop. Okay, but we're uh, here mostly for the model monitor, more than this using this algorithm. The default model monitor alerts you to model drift. That's why these are very important. And you deploy at this instance, and then the baseline data set, you should use the original data set. Don't use any of the S3 buckets or any of that. You'll get an error. Okay. Getting its baselines. See what it's doing. Okay. Okay, the reason why I put eight is because there's eight columns. So obviously you want to do and yeah, well that's pretty self-explanatory okay so name your uh scheme name your schedule job whatever you want to name it and then monitor list executions Still hasn't executed yet, but this was just to show, give you a good idea. And then guys, before you want to delete this deployment, always remember, delete the monitoring schedule. Otherwise, you can't delete the deployment. Let's go back to that a second. When I mean by a bunch of guys on um, were complaining and then they had no answer... Instead of answering them, I thought about making this video to be relevant for their little dilemma. How I figured it out was how I did it on the linear learner. Some algorithms are more sensitive. You gotta do them a certain way with the S3 buckets on SageMaker. Uh, sensitive or picky, however you want to name it. Yeah, and then remember, your feature dim is your X train shape. Same on your linear learner for regression or any of that, or K and N, which I don't like K and N. I am going to do a video of that eventually. You know, just for anyone who wants to learn how to do it. That's why I do these. Okay, guys. That's it. Thank you.